How Life Started on Earth The origin of life on Earth is one of the great mysteries of science. There are various theories and hypotheses for how life emerged, but none of them have been proved conclusively. The Earth is about 4.5 billion years old and life may have emerged between 4.3 and 4.7 billion years ago. The oldest known fossils, however, are only 3.7 billion years old. During 600 million year window, life may have emerged repeatedly, only to be snuffed out by catastrophic collisions with asteroids and comets. The details of those early events are not well preserved in Earth's oldest rocks. Some hints come from the oldest zircons, highly durable minerals that formed in magma. Scientists have found traces of a form of carbon an important element in living organisms in one such 4.1 billion year old zircon. However, it does not provide enough evidence to prove life's existence at that early date. Where did life on Earth begin? Two possibilities are in volcanically active hydrothermal environments on land and at sea. Some microorganisms thrive in the scalding, highly acidic hot springs environment like those found today in Iceland, Norway and Yellowstone National Park. The same goes for deep sea hydrothermal vents. These chimney-like vents from where seawater comes into contact with magma on the ocean floor, resulting in streams of superheated plumes. The microorganisms that live near such plumes have led some scientists to suggest them as the birthplaces of Earth's first life forms. Some of the ingredients of life are water, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur and energy. One of the major scientific theories for how life emerged is the RNA world hypothesis, which proposes that RNA molecules were the first self-replicating entities that could store and transmit genetic information. Living things are enormously complex. However, all this complexity did not leap fully formed from the primordial soup. Instead, life almost certainly originated in a series of small steps, each building upon the complexity that evolved previously. Simple organic molecules were formed. Simple organic molecules, similar to the nucleotide are the building blocks of life and must have been involved in its origin. Experiments suggest that organic molecules could have been synthesized in the atmosphere of early Earth and rained down into the oceans. RNA and DNA molecules, the genetic material for all life, are just long chains of simple nucleotides. Replicating molecules evolved and began to undergo natural selection. All living things reproduce, copying their genetic material and passing it on to their offspring. Thus, the ability to copy the molecules that encode genetic information is a key step in the origin of life. Without it, life could not exist. This ability probably first evolved in the form of an RNA self-replicator, an RNA molecule that could copy itself. Many biologists hypothesize that this step led to an RNA world, in which RNA did many jobs, storing genetic information, copying itself, and performing basic metabolic functions. Today, these jobs are performed by many different sorts of molecules, DNA, RNA and proteins mostly, but in the RNA world, RNA did it all. Self-replication opened the door for natural selection. Once a self-replicating molecule formed, some variants of these early replicators would have done a better job of copying themselves than others, producing more offspring. These super-replicators would have become more common, that is, until one of them was accidentally built in a way that allowed it to be a super-super replicator, and then, that variant would take over. Through this process of continuous natural selection, small changes in replicating molecules eventually accumulated until a stable, efficient replicating system evolved. Replicating molecules became enclosed within a cell membrane. The evolution of a membrane surrounding the genetic material provided two huge advantages. The products of the genetic material could be kept close by and the internal environment of this protocell could be different than the external environment. Cell membranes must have been so advantageous that these encased replicators quickly outcompeted naked, replicators. This breakthrough would have given rise to an organism much like a modern bacterium. Some cells began to evolve modern metabolic processes and outcompeted those with older forms of metabolism. Up until this point, life had probably relied on RNA for most jobs. But everything changed when some cell or group of cells evolved to use different types of molecules for different functions. 
DNA, which is more stable than RNA, became the genetic material, proteins, which are often more efficient promoters of chemical reactions than RNA, became responsible for basic metabolic reactions in the cell, and RNA was demoted to the role of messenger, carrying information from the DNA to protein building centers in the cell. Cells incorporating these innovations would have easily out-competed, old-fashioned, cells with RNA-based metabolisms, hailing the end of the RNA world. Multicellularity evolved. As early as 2 billion years ago, some cells stopped going their separate ways after replicating and evolved specialized functions. They gave rise to Earth's first lineage of multicellular organisms, such as the 1.2 billion year old fossilized red algae. Organic molecules from meteors. Each day the Earth is bombarded with meteorites and dust from comets. Analyses of space dust and meteors that have landed on Earth have revealed that they contain many organic molecules. The infall of cometary dust and meteorites was far greater when the Earth was young, 4 billion years ago. Many scientists believe that such extraterrestrial organic matter contributed significantly to the organic molecules available at the time that life on Earth began. Modern genetics allows scientists to measure how different species are from each other at a molecular level, and thus to estimate how much time has passed since a single lineage split into different species. Confounding factors rack up for species that are very distantly related, making the earlier dates more uncertain. Today, research on the origin of life is expanding. As scientists have been able to find more and more exoplanets that is, planets around stars elsewhere in the galaxy. The question of what is the essential ingredients for life are and how to look for signs of them has heated up. As we look elsewhere in the universe for life beyond our home planet, we think we're most likely to find it lurking somewhere where there's water, and where there's a heat source to make the water warm. Although we know that some living things thrive in more extreme conditions, the combination of warmth and water seem to be the most likely requirements for creating an environment that can support some kind of life, at least, the kinds of life forms similar to what we find on Earth. But who knows what other kinds of living things might exist? Despite all the species we know have lived and existed, many are found every day. Millions more are thought to remain undiscovered. Today humans are the dominant species on the planet. Our footprint means many organisms are becoming extinct. One challenge of humans to fit into the timeline of life on Earth is to see how it would look if we were to vacate the planet and let nature take back control. What other animals lay on the depths of the sea or in the far reaches of the globe is anyone's guess. Whatever they are, they all make up the abundance of life on Earth. Now it's up to you. How does the timeline of life on Earth impact our lives today? Can we reshape our habits to better in tune with planet Earth? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below.